last year we started a clover plot in here and foxtail came in and took over so what we did was before it went to seed we cut it let it come back to be 10 inches tall or so and then sprayed it and uh, so we have a good burn down we got some soil exposed we're probably going to go ahead and drill the seed in I've got a brassica chicory and clover mix to put in here and then I'll have the landowner call the packet down to flatten all this grass it's all dead that'll be a really good mulch so we should get an excellent stand here and it's just a matter of keeping up with the grass going forward uh, the main thing with foxtail is just don't let it go to seed because there's thousands of seed on every plant in this field it's about six acres and as you can see we're up here in God's country I don't know if you can see I'm gonna switch it so it's view This is probably the prettiest place in Pennsylvania. Anyhow, six acre field in the middle of the mountains. I had a farmer come in and spray this yesterday with glyphosate. This was a hay field and all they ever did was cut hay off of it and keep taking the grass away, taking the grass away and feeding cows on the other side of the creek, which doesn't make any sense at all. If you're going to feed grass, put the cows on the field. But anyhow, Delmer's helping me uh, drill this in and uh, putting the Chilcoat Forest remix, the fall mix on. And this is going to be the prime feeding location for all the deer around here in about a six week period. So by opening day of archery, we should have a really good stand of forage in here. This is the area that last year you saw the video, and I'll, I'll post it on here somewhere, <clears throat> a link at the end of this. Uh, you'll be able to see that video where we sprayed this area for ferns. This was all covered in ferns, real dark. And as you can see, there's plenty of light up there now. We're taking uh, a lot of pole wood. You see all that uh, Oh, there's beech and, and uh, birch and maple. They're taking that out. And if you look at the difference, that's, this is the way the light regime was down in here. You know, you, the camera brightens itself up as you look down there, but it's very dark woods down in there with nothing in the understory. This area is going to, get a fence around it to keep the deer off of the trees and we'll start growing new trees and in four or five years that'll be thick with all kinds of regeneration hopefully a lot of it will be oak sugar maple uh, not a lot of cherry up in here but we get a nice mixture of woods up in there regenerating and creating thick cover my idea is to, up on top of the ridge here is uh going to be the bedding area down below and that uh, 10 acre food area is going to be the feeding zone and then deer can go back and forth it makes them really easy to hunt all right i'm going to go up on top and see how it looks at the top here's a good before and after spot here's what the place looked like a year ago i'm standing at the edge of the job and this is what it looks like now most of the ferns are gone. Most of the low quality timber is gone and we left a lot of seed trees. Plenty of seed crowns up there. Hopefully we'll get some acorns. I know in some areas we have acorns this year, some we don't. Gypsy moth hit this area pretty hard. So this is the second flush of leaves coming out of these trees. And uh, they might not have enough energy to make acorns. So that's unfortunate. But you can see how stuff just comes flying out of the ground. I mean, 
first year you already have tree seedlings probably wildflowers there's a birch tree you know you'll never stop the birch so we tried to put a hurting on the birch and the beach in here and hopefully this will regenerate nicely probably don't even need to fence it but we're fencing it anyway because it's funded by NRCS which is nice makes it pretty cheap and uh, looks like there's some ferns that are popping back up wouldn't hurt to hit them again but it's nice when you have some tops in here that acts as a natural fence keeps the deer off makes a microclimate that trees can get started in and this will be a, a real thicket in about four years this is an area that we sprayed and fenced two years ago this was waist-high ferns in here where they had clear-cut about 50 acres and it did not regenerate at all because the deer ate everything so we sprayed all the ferns the ferns are pretty well tamped down and as you can see unfortunately it's coming back with a lot of birch again you know birch is just ubiquitous and you can't you can't deal with it but i'm going to turn the phone around and if you look over that way we sprayed that whole thing over there and it's all just nice and green all kinds of different plants growing we have a lot of blackberry now and you could even I don't know one more year you could probably take this fence down they probably won't because this is also a funded fence so you're kind of beholden to whatever NRCS thinks about when to remove it but I like the idea that there's <clears throat> there's lots of blackberry that popped up out of the ground and, and is taken off. That's all blackberry and some birch. Looks pretty good. There's a couple deer in there, but not very many. So and we also have the the club planting trees and shrubs in there. So we'll get a program where every year the guys will come up and do like 500 trees and shrubs. So, you know, over the course of time you can, you know, hopefully they can step that up a little bit. There's no reason why they can't do a couple thousand, but, you know, baby steps. But I'd like to get this uh, reclaimed and, and growing native plants again, other than ferns. But so far... The results are positive, you know, it's not too bad. So, you know, I'd like to see some oak and cherry, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. It's unfortunate, but unless you plant, the nice thing about having a fence, you can plant anything you want and it'll survive. Okay, well, that's the tour of this property. Things are developing really nice. Look at that. You can't tell on the camera, but it's just beautiful here, up in the mountains. The place is loaded with wildlife and scenery and good trout fishing. It's got it all. All right, well, on to the next thing. Uh, the next thing coming up, we're going to finish up that, that small uh, food plot for a guy that lives in the suburbs. That's going to be really interesting because that, that place is loaded with deer. And we're going to squeeze a food plot into his little 8-acre lot. So that'll be fun. Can't wait to see how that turns out and how the hunting is. All right. See you then.